how to build a Yamada y remate for tango in six seconds. Ooh. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillén for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing flamenco, you play flamenco guitar, you play cajon, you play palmas, or you just want to understand how it works. Today, I want to share with you a very simple and very efficient way to create a llamada y remate por tangos without even getting up from your chair. First step, obviously we need to know El Compass de Tango. The Compass de Tango is a four beats compass and the basic way of playing it with the palmas is like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? With a foot on the first beat here down. You can't see it, but it's there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm sure you already know this. But then we need to have it very clear on our fingertips. And if it's not clear for you, go and check the video, the compass, the tango on your fingertips or something like that. I'll put the link somewhere. Second step, we need to know how a llamada and remate works for tango. So just let's see a very, very traditional example of llamada y remate for uh, Isabel Bayon. We usually have a sequence of four compasses of four beats or two pairs of compasses of four beats. I know that dancers many times they count the tango in eight beats. I mean, at the end it's the same, but I don't really like the uh, count in eight beats because it can be uh, limiting for us sometimes with the cante specifically. I don't want to go deeper in this now. Let's see our sequence with Legos. This is one compass of four beats. And I just said that we need four of them. We have this, right? Four compasses or two pairs of compasses. So typically the Yamada with this very easy to identify uh, arm motion is on the first beat of the first compass, okay, here. The cierre, the end of the remate, is at the end of the fourth compass on the third beat of the fourth compass. There. So what do we do with this? We need to create a dynamic. We need to create a tension that leads to a resolution, a question that leads to an answer. An easy way to understand this is to divide our four compasses sequence into two pairs of compasses. And they are quite symmetrical. We could have twice the same thing, okay? With one and three and one and three. So what we need to do is give them different intentions. The first one would be the tension, the question, and the second one would be the resolution, the answer. What happens if we sing this pattern on our fingers? But first let's switch El Tito on, okay? Four beats, 145. Remember, different intentions. The first is an opening, a question, and the second one is a resolution. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Pa, 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 pa. It was very, very basic, right? But you could feel this tension, resolution, question, answer. And now what we can do is just develop this ID. If I sing another very, very, very traditional, typical, simple one, it would be something like that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Pa, 
pa 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 tico ta ta pa 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 tico ta ta One important ingredient, okay, just uh, to accentuate even more this sensation of closing, of uh, resolution, of answer, is to stress on the fourth beat of the third compass. This one. <laughs> This one. One, two, three, four. Pa, 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 tico ta ta, pa, pum, pa. This impulse on the fourth beat is very, very important. It won't be there all the time, okay? It's not mandatory, but it's very, very efficient and very traditional also. It will make your remate, the ending of this sequence, very, very clear for the musician. <laughs> And now the final touch, because now we have something very, very functional, okay? And we can start applying variations. We can customize it and we can make it the way we want. For instance, let's try to move the cierre, which is on the third bit of the fourth compass. We'll move it somewhere else. In our sequence, this one, we'll just move it here. And let's see how it sounds. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Pa, 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 tico ta ta. Pa, 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 pum, pa, tico ta, tico ta, tico ta, ta. This is a very common way of uh, applying a variation. <laughs> Another thing we can do is to make this sequence longer. We could imagine instead of two pairs of compass, we could have three pairs of compass. But here I don't have more blue Legos. Let's see an example of this with Patricia Guerrero. And we can sing something like that. Or eight, four pairs of compass. And then what you need to do with this concept is just translate it in uh, steps if you are a dancer or in a remate if you are a guitarist or you play cajon. It's the same idea. Practice this with your fingertips. The fingers help us to know where we are in the compass. The important beats are the one and the three with this structure, okay? If we keep the structure in mind and you can visualize here where you are, you just have unlimited uh, creativity options. Just try it and let me know if it works for you. This way you can really create a Yamada y Remate in less than six seconds. The time you need to sing it, okay? Without getting lost because you have this. I hope it could help. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, Also go and check flamencomaps.com where I explain all my classes and courses and my way of teaching flamenco. And that's it for today. Don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different, make it yours. Mm -hmm.